So I'm going to talk a little bit today about holsters, specifically appendix IWB holsters, though a lot of this information can be used for IWB holsters in general, and some of it can even translate over to OWB holsters. The reason is because this holster here that's in some of my videos, uh, it has more questions asked about it than anything else in my videos combined. So this is just a holster for my G26. It's a personal holster that I made myself a year ago, maybe. I've been making this, this style design for a couple years for some older guns as well. Uh, and originally I wanted to make it with a detachable magazine so I could have the flexibility to carry it with the mag or without. Uh, but honestly, I've never taken the mag off. So I don't really make this design for any new guns that I carry anymore and I've switched over to, to this design. Uh, and this one, you know, it's, it's beat up and worn out. It's probably, it's probably ready for a new holster, but just for the sake of the video, and since I have one in front of me, this is uh, my newer design that I make now. I'm just going to use it to demo some features that I think you should look for uh, when you're thinking about purchasing an appendix carry holster. So first of all, in any holster, uh, and it's very important in an AIWB holster because you're pointing your gun at some very delicate things, is fully cover the trigger guard. You want a holster that allows no access to the trigger guard when your gun is holstered. That means your gun cannot go off if there's no access to the trigger. And this is paramount for any IWB, for any OWB, for any holster in general, purse holster, whatever. You don't want access to your trigger guard because you're probably going to be carrying one in the chamber. I always do. I would recommend that you do too. And if the trigger gets depressed, then your gun's going to go off. So you never want that to, to happen accidentally or negligently. Another feature that I think is pretty important is that the holster won't collapse on itself. And I'll just show that I'm clear here. So this is a Kydex holster. This is, this particular one is 0.08, though some manufacturers use 0.06, which is uh, a little thinner, a little more flexible, but still pretty rigid. And some maybe use 0.093, I'm not sure. But uh, the vast majority use 0.08, and this is a great, great thickness. It's pretty thin, so it doesn't add much bulk, but it's it's, it's pretty stout as well. So you don't want your gun, you don't want your holster to collapse on itself when you're reholstering your gun because especially for appendix carry, when you're reholstering, uh, I'm not sure the statistics, but I, I would guess that most negligent or accidental discharges happen when you're reholstering your gun. Whether your finger's still on there and it gets pulled or your a piece of clothing gets caught in there, or your boxes or your shirt, whatever, it gets caught. Uh, in between there or your holster folds in on itself and it pulls the trigger. So being able to clear the trigger guard area and not have your holster collapse on itself is, is paramount for, for an AIWB holster and holsters in general. So you don't want your holster to collapse on itself and you want a holster that you can practice reholstering with because I believe you should practice with the holster and the gun that you carry with uh, more than anything else. So if you have a holster that you can't reholster, if you have a holster that collapses on itself, that makes uh, practicing really dangerous. So there's, assuming you even have the opportunity to take a full two-hand draw and shoot, sometimes you might not be able to do a two-handed uh, reholster. There's no reason to ever rush a reholster, but in a situation where you might have handled the threat, you might be restraining him, you might be holding back your kid or something, uh, there's a very real scenario we don't need to reholster your gun one-handed you can't just put it on the ground you can't give it to somebody else you your other hand is occupied and you need your right hand to do something so if you want a holster they can reholster with one hand uh, that means the holster needs to not collapse on itself and it needs to be safe because you don't want to end the wire reholstering so another important factor is that your holster allows you to get a full grip so uh, the kydex or leather or whatever is cut away enough here that you can drive your finger all the way up into here uh, and there's no extra material in here that is going to inhibit your grip. So basically when you're going to dry your gun, you're going to get a full grip on it and you're going to pull your gun out. So you don't want to have to be fumbling and changing your grip as you're like drawing it out. So just make sure the holster looks like you can get a full grip on the gun. Uh, in addition to that, uh, it should have positive retention. This is this is a uh, more important, I think, in OWB carry holsters, or even if you're carrying at the three or four o'clock. Appendix is a very safe, secure location to carry your gun. Uh, retention is obviously still important there, but in IWB holsters, even if your holster somehow had no retention, once you put it on your body and once you have your belt cinched down, you're gonna have retention on your gun. So, judging your holster's retention out of your belt 
isn't necessarily a sign of how much retention you're gonna have when it's actually inside your waistband. Having said that, it's good that your gun doesn't fall out. I, I like to use my guns with a little less retention uh, than a lot of other people. Some people's holsters are just like, oh, you gotta yank it out and you can finally get it out. Mine are, mine's pretty easy to get in and out. Uh, and that's just, that's kind of personal preference. It should definitely never fall out, but it should have positive retention. Uh, some holsters have adjustable retention and I'll get into that a little bit later. Uh, another another thing that you'll see across holsters is how it's going to attach to your belt. So probably the most common is these clips uh, with maybe more common even than that or at least second most common is with these snap closures. So these are great. The snap closures are probably the best, most secure, uh, least prone to failure. So you'll see these on a lot of good holsters. Uh, I don't use them personally, but it's not because they're not great. They're a great option, maybe the best option. Though clips are much more convenient for me. Though the snap doesn't take a whole lot longer to fumble on and off and snap closed, uh, it, it does take longer. And I, I take my holster on and off quite a bit. So snaps, great option if you find a holster that uses those. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all, but I, I prefer clips and that's just a personal thing. Clips can fail, these can snap, uh, but it, it doesn't happen that often. I've never had it happen to myself, but there's, it, it happens, it happens, and a lot of people I know it's happened to. So my favorite clips are probably these G-code clips here. And they're angled up, they have this little, this little tab here that allows you to spread it out and put it over your belt. Uh, and this angle in the clip causes it to catch on your belt and it won't pull off. This is probably the most popular clip because it's about a third or a fourth the cost to, to use on holsters than this clip is. So this clip's also good. It's not quite as easy to get on your belt, but it's still pretty durable and it still has all the right features. So either of these clips are my favorite. Some clips I don't like are these... Uh, J hooks. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. So the idea of this is your pants go in this slot and your belt comes in over here. What that does, that puts the entire weight of your gun and your mag, if you have one too, on your pants and not your belt. Uh, and then drawing, theoretically, your belt comes in here and you pull up and you'll be able to draw your gun and your holster will stay put. Uh, in reality, it doesn't work out so well. You're this will pull down on your pants, it'll go below your belt, and you'll draw and you'll pull your whole holster out. Uh, I never recommend these, I don't like them. Uh, they're supposed to be a little more minimal, as in you can't see them uh, clipped onto your belt, but I mean this is really, it's as obvious as this. So I, I don't personally like these. There's some other clips like this that doesn't have the angle I was talking about that really cinches it onto your belt. So these just aren't as secure, and these holsters in general I'll get to later. But So you want a good clip or a uh, snap enclosure. So another thing, this is probably the main thing overlooked by some uh, holster manufacturers, I think some people that probably make holsters but don't actually carry appendix themselves, is that really you want your holster to be as minimal as possible, uh, both in uh, how wide it is but also in its footprint. So if you could have a holster that's footprint was just your gun, that would be ideal. But obviously that's not possible, so the footprint's going to be bigger. We want to keep it as small as we can. So we basically don't want any excess sticking out this way. We don't want any excess sticking out this way. We don't want any excess sticking out basically in any direction. But right here, this part right here is the most important. I see some hol holster manufacturers not rounding this off here. and just This is just extending out and that's no good. That digs into your leg. I'll, I'll demonstrate here in a little bit how that works out. But you basically want to make sure this edge is as minimal as possible. So assuming my gun is right about here, I carry pretty close to the midsection or the midline so that allows me to get fully full range of motion. Uh, some people carry a little more this way which I don't really understand. Their pants must be higher that allows them to get more but for me if I carry there, I can't lift my leg hardly at all. So that correlates with how much excess you want over here. The less excess you have allows your leg to get higher. So even a millimeter more excess here 
can translate to, you know, an inch or so travel at your knee. So I'll kind of, I'll go in a little more into reasons that we don't like these holsters, but we don't want a holster that's gonna collapse on itself. Like, yeah, it may be nice, you throw this on your gym shorts or whatever you like to do, but uh, a holster that's not gonna retain its shape when you're reholstering, or it won't even allow you to reholster, that, that's a dangerous holster. And especially for appendix carry where a negligent discharge would almost likely result in death or blowing something off that would maybe make you commit suicide anyway. You, you want your holster to be very stout. So nylon holsters are kind of, they're, they're out, they're, they're convenient, they fit multiple guns maybe, but I would never use one. Uh, leather holsters, this one is not a nice leather holster, this is a cheap one. There's some nice leather holsters that are more rigid and those are kind of okay, but they wear out over time if you're carrying every day or sweating in them. Uh, and they, they maintain their rigidity for a little while, but they too will eventually collapse. Most of the NDs that I've heard about are because of leather holsters collapsing on themselves, uh, holster related NDs. These are other options that have leather back and kydex front. They're, they're better than the last two options, but still, this is not any more comfortable. I, I've, I started on these holsters before I switched to a kydex because I thought they'd be more comfortable. I didn't even notice the difference in comfort between these uh, and my kydex counterparts. But these also, a lot of times, are just too much. The footprint's too big. The leather gets in the way of your grip. Uh, I'm not a fan of these that much, but they're better than the other two if you have to use one of them. So now I'm going to talk about some personal preferences for holsters. Uh, and keep in mind these are preferences, so they're by, by no means are they 100% right or wrong. They're just what I like to do when I carry. So I, carrying appendix, which is what I carry 99.9% .9 of the time, is I like to have an extra mag. And whether that's in a detachable mag configuration, like something like an incog, where you can take it off, or it's something like this and a few other man manufacturers make that's always connected and you can't take it off, so you always need to have your mag with you. I would say that is good. Like I said earlier, I've never taken my mag off of this, ho this holster. There's never been a time where I'm like, oh, I can carry my G26, but I don't have quite enough room to carry it with the mag. Especially if you're carrying appendix, the mag doesn't add any discomfort over the regular holster, and it I don't think it really prints anymore. It's just... There's no reason, if you're carrying this gun, not to carry with a mag. So, extra mag, obviously, for extra capacity uh, and also for, you know, helping with malfunction clearing. So, personally, I always carry a Penix. I always carry with an extra mag. I don't see really a reason not to. Uh, another personal opinion for me is I like to carry my holsters when they have a mag attached or when they don't have a mag attached like this with a single clip. Though, you'd be hard-pressed to find many IWB holsters uh, that's just a gun that have multiple clips. So single clip, if it's just a gun, single clip, if it has a gun and a mag. And the reason for this is the single clip, for me personally, allows it to shift in my belt as I'm crouching or bending or moving around. Uh, and a double clip doesn't allow that. A double clip, your gun is very secure uh, and it won't move around and it won't shift with your body. So if normally, the, the butt of my gun would be digging into me, whereas with one clip, it would shift and bend out of my way. If there's two clips, it'll be there and it'll be a discomfort. Uh, there are definitely a lot, of or a lot of pros for carrying with two clips also. It ensures that your gun is always at a very specific ride height, that it's always at a very specific position on your body. So for, for training and uh, repeatability, your gun is always in the same place. There's always the same amount of gap between your belt line and your grip, uh, and that's really good. But I've trained extensively and practiced a lot with a single clip in various ride positions, and I've adapted my draw to be able to just work with it. So pros and cons to each. I, I prefer a single clip just because uh, it's so much more comfortable for me than having uh, a second clip lined up over here. Another preference thing is uh, sweat guards, uh, and it adds uh, a little bit of comfort and, you know, it obviously, as the name implies, keeps sweat off of your gun. If you're carrying appendix, you're going to sweat, your stomach's going to sweat uh, in the heat of summer. So keeping sweat off your gun, yeah, I would say it's never a bad thing, but does it matter? Is it life or death? Probably not. but. Just mainly, you want to be able to get a full grip on your gun. And also, depending on if you wear an undershirt or not, 
uh, sweat guard can help retain your, sh your shirt uh, and keep it out of the way so it doesn't fall in as you're trying to reholster. So I think there's not a lot of cons to a high or a mid sweat guard, but it's, it's also a preference. I usually go for the high or mid though. Uh, another thing that I like are open-ended holsters. Uh, and that's because I have a lot of threaded barrels that I run on guns. Her open-ended holster allows a little more flexibility, allows you to, to use your holster with a uh, extended barrel or with your flush barrel. Uh, the main thing is, it's nice when holsters extend a little bit uh, because your slide of your gun and your barrel of your gun is going to get hot if you're shooting. So if you're practicing or if you're training, if you're doing a training course where you're running hundreds of rounds through your gun, your slide and your barrel is going to get hot. So a lot of these holsters have uh, complete open ends here. Uh, and where if you're, especially if you're like going commando and you're reholstering your gun, you're putting a, a hot gun right on your junk and that's no good. If you have boxers, that helps a little bit. But still, I prefer my holsters to at least cover the full slide of my gun. And that's just because if you're using this holster and you're training or practicing with this holster and running a lot of guns, or running a lot of rounds through your guns while using this holster, you're gonna want a little layer here to protect you from the, the bare heat of your slide. And a lot of holsters come with adjustable retention too. And they'll be using some rubber thing here and screwing that tighter is more retention. Uh, loosening a lot causes less retention. So adjustable retention, if you're not making your holster yourself, or if you're not comfortable uh, applying a heat gun or a blow dryer to an area of your holster, then adjustable retention can kind of can come in handy. But again, that's kind of, uh, it's not a big issue. Tactical fuzz, as people are calling it. The suede wrap on holsters, I'm not a big fan of it, uh, partially because I prefer one clip and I prefer the holster to be able to move around. And the fuzz is great uh, if you don't want your holster to move around. If you're running two clips or even one clip, you don't want your holster. For me, I'm running one clip and it moves around and causes my boxers to shift up and get all crazy and it causes the gun to stick. And uh, I'm just not a fan of sweating on this stuff. And I, I haven't actually worn a tactical fuzz holster long enough to know if it ever starts to stink or smell like sweat. Apparently it doesn't, but uh, personal preference. There's some pros, there's some cons, whatever. Uh, another one, almost every holster will have it is adjustable ride height. And whether that's uh, in multiple holes in your clips or multiple holes on the holster, this will allow you to dial in your ride height. So if you like a deeper concealment, you move your clip up. If you like a full grip on your gun and having it print a little more, if you're okay with that, then you'll put the, the uh, clip lower. And those are just kind of some niceties that holsters will have. Uh, definitely a, a, a good holster doesn't need to have it to be a good holster, but it, it, it's a little added benefit.